So now that we know a little bit about our whiteboards and how to connect them, how we can start incorporating them into our classroom, I wanted to give you some examples, and I want the examples to be relevant for your class. These examples may not matter to you because I'm gonna show you some things for math or some things for science or some things for literacy, but if they're not, feel free to not use them. None of these are a requirement. They are all suggestions, and all of these templates will be available for you on our training portal. You just need to open it up, copy the template, paste it into your presentation, and you can then edit it to make it your own. The goal that we have is to get our students to wrap their heads around the fact that there is work time and there is entertainment time. Every bit of technology that they interact with has been entertainment up to this point. So it's hard for them to fully understand when we're sitting there and now in a one-to-one -one district where every student has their own device, how they should be connecting with the materials. So we would use, uh, a couple years ago, a big thing was turn and talk. So we're getting our students collaborating. We're getting them working in groups. We want them having a conversation with the teacher instead of just, I fill out a worksheet here and you fill out a worksheet at your seat. This type of technology will help us out with that. So we're going to be looking at three things today. Uh, the first one being interactive pieces on Schoology, followed by uh, Smart Notebook, and then finally Lumio. And Smart Notebook and Lumio will be included in other trainings. Feel free to go back through the portal to those particular videos. We're also going to be focusing in this video on secondary examples because we really want uh, all of the, the training and the videos that are available to be available at your level. So these are ideas for you. If you are somebody who is not in the secondary model, but you feel that these are beneficial, feel free to use them. If you're in the secondary model, but these are a little bit high for your students, then by all means, go back and check out the intermediate templates or even the primary templates, depending on your particular needs. So the idea that we have is to make our learning more interactive. So how do we connect our students better in a digital environment to get their brains functioning on more than just, I can input things on the computer and then I'm done. We want them to use computers as a learning tool, which they already do in areas like uh, TikTok and YouTube. So they're getting all of this information, is it correct? So when we look at, can students learn online? Absolutely, they do it all the time. We need to then adjust to help speak their language. So this is one example. Uh, again, these are just a couple things we've thrown out for secondary. But in my Schoology page here, I put a piece of interactive digital media. And I could bring this up. This is uh, Google Maps on Street View. And I might say, well, what is this rock up here? Well, it looks kind of funny, but it almost looks purposeful. Certainly, the sides are smooth. And you can see as I move my pen, I can interact with this particular board. If I see all these people, and I see houses. So this is some kind of neighborhood, but there's something special about this neighborhood. Well, let's go around and see the front of this. So in this particular view, or this model, I can move around anywhere that I want and actually take my students walking. We can explore places. We can go inside different elements. Uh, this is in the Sphinx. So you can say, oh, well, you know, every movie that I've seen the Sphinx didn't really look like that, but those pyramids look a lot bigger than I, I thought they would be. Okay, so we're able to actually use Street View to go to some different places. Another one that's one of my favorites when I first got into interactive multimedia technology, uh, I've never been to Paris. I probably, unfortunately, never will. But I was curious what it looked like to stand underneath the Eiffel Tower. So now I have an opportunity to take my students here. Maybe we're doing research for a history paper, or we want a writing prompt. Maybe we have uh, an engineering discussion that we're having here, right? So now we can see up close and personal. And this is not what it looks like in the movies. But what's kind of cool is looking at all these people here. Again, I can take my students on a walk through Paris. We can actually go to the neighborhoods. Someone lives here. How does this neighborhood look like yours? Or how is it different than yours? What would it be like if I lived here in this little window and every morning I woke up and this was the view in my backyard. So you can see now we're creating a discussion where our students are seeing things more in a real world context that they can explore and experience. 
So with Schoology, we also have um, some other examples, such as Smart Notebook. And Smart Notebook is a really great presentation tool. The web-based Smart Notebook is less interactive than its counterpart, Lumio. So we're going to be looking at both of those. But if I just need to get the information out, Smart Notebook might be a great place to start. I could put up choice boards. Uh, you can see it works very much like PowerPoint, where all of my slides are over here to the side. So if I select the slide that I need, and this is one uh, where we would have an example like with fractions. So if I use my selector tool here, and I have infinite cloners, so I can just pull off as many of these as I want. And you might say, well, music, what does that have to do with math? Well, especially when students are struggling, the hands-on manipulatives we know are great. So if I take this particular one and I say, well, I have four pieces, one, two, three, four, four total out of four. If I have all four of them, I have one whole. This is now a fraction problem. If I put this note up here, well, it takes up two out of four. We know that two out of four simplifies to one half. So the final one that I'm going to pull up here is Lumio. Now, Lumio is Smart Notebook. Smart Notebook is Lumio. Lumio is the web portion where I can take all my Smart Notebooks, put them here, and make them more interactive. There are tons and tons of examples and opportunities in Lumio for you to collect data on your students, take control of their devices. So if you had, for example, you were somebody who liked Nearpod, Nearpod is great because as I move my presentation along, my students' screens change with it. So I'm keeping them engaged, and that's going to help with our classroom management. The good rule of thumb is for every two to three slides of information, you have one piece of interactivity, whether that's a group thing, an individual handout, a turn and talk, a whole class whiteboard, something that's going to engage them. But what they're doing on their devices is now showing up in the front of the room. It's no longer a passive input piece for their learning. Yes, I am collecting information. I can do quizzes here. I can do reviews here. I have lots of opportunities. I'm getting the data that I need, but they're also participating in the conversation. The expectation is there, which is going to keep them more engaged. And students really like seeing what they're doing on their computers showing up as part of the discussion in the whole class. So some examples that we would have uh, for secondary in here might be an exit slip such as, uh, I don't have any students rostered, so it's going to keep coming up. But when I turn this into a handout, all of my students who are rostered in my class, their names will show up here. Anybody who submits work gets a green check, so that I know who did their work, who didn't do their work, and if I click on their name, I can see their individual uh, pages of work. Down here, I have teacher handout, <clears throat> so I'm going to keep referring to that because I don't have students automatically rostered here, so it won't just continue on. Three things that I learned and one thing I have a question about. This is a great exit slip. Put it at the end of your lesson, and if you like it, copy it and paste it to the next day. And it just, the, even the interactivity piece goes with it. So if I've assigned this as a group work or an individual handout, it is a group work or an individual handout every time I copy it. If I want to change it, I can edit it in my Lumio slides with the click of a button, which is the magic wand on the top. Three things that I learned. If I'm looking at math, here we're going to be looking at pan balanced equations. So this is something we had a lot of manipulatives for. Up here you can see that I have x equals 1, y equals 1. So let's make x equal to 2 and y equal to, yeah, we'll keep y equals 1. So now I come down here and I want to put my equation in. Let's do two x's and a 1. And you can see up here, 2x plus 1 automatically comes up. It's building my equation while we're using hands-on manipulatives. Down here, I'm going to put this as a y and a 1. And it's telling me that 2x plus 1 is greater than y plus 1. So let's add another x. So now I have 2x plus 1 is still greater than x plus y plus 1 because x is 2 and y is 1. So maybe I'll give students a handout, and this would be uh, if you're doing groups in your classroom. I have a group of students I need to meet with over here. I have a group that are working on enrichment pieces over here. And then here's a sheet. I want you to go work out each of these equations and tell me what x and y are equal to. Yes, it does have a piece up here, but this manipulative uh, makes it very, very easy to use. So if I pull off this y and I pull up this x, now you can see my arrows turn green, and I now have an equal sign. If I start separating them, 
Maybe I take this X away and I put two Ys up. I'll stack my Ys. So now I have 2x plus 1 equals x plus 2y plus 1. Well, let's start pulling things off. Well, I know that x can come off here and x can come off here. 1 can come off here, 1 can come off here. Now I'm balanced that x equals 2y. So now I can solve that. If I want to reset it, I just go down here to the corner um, where my reset button is, and I push that. It clears everything out for my next person to participate. And the same idea, uh, again, these interactivity pieces show up in all Lumios. They are all free, so we don't have to pay for any of those. Uh, and we have plenty of storage space to put your lessons in there. Uh, it is really, really good to know that any lesson that you build in Smart Notebook or Lumio can be shared to any other teacher in the district. So if you're creating something, please don't have every single person creating the same thing. Get with your team, separate out, say, I'm going to take unit one, why don't you take unit two, you take unit three. Even if it's just the bare basic part, and then I can I get a copy that I can tweak to make my own for my individual classroom. But that's really helpful because we don't want it, everybody in the district to, to recreate everything from the ground up. Okay? So this is states of matter. I can turn this into phase challenges or how matter interacts. So we have a science one. I'm going to do states of matter. And let's go ahead and collect and select that. So here, I have different atoms and molecules that I can choose from. So let's look at water. Now I have water molecules, and you can see I have two hydrogen to one oxygen. The molecules are represented here. I have pressure and I have temperature, and every bit of it is editable. So now we're in Kelvin. I can see what it looks like as a solid. I can see what it looks like as a liquid or a gas. Or maybe I turn it into a solid, and let's turn up the heat. And as I turn up the heat, watch what happens to all of my molecules. I can pause it. I can reset it. Turn it into a gas, and then let's cool it. And you can see all of, as my temperature is cooling up there, all of my molecules start coming back together. So this is a really great interactive piece. If I put this into my Lumio, I can send this out to every one of my students, and they can feel free to explore the interactivity with me. If I have atomic interactions, it's a similar idea. The distance between the atoms, I can grab it and pull, and you can see that changes my chart up top. I can add different forces, high forces, the total force, the attractiveness or repulsiveness. I can select the uh, elements that I want to interact with with the atoms. Maybe I have a cause and effect team activity. So, yeah, we don't have enough to form teams because they don't have students in here. But can a cup break on its own? With your partner, write down reasons your cup may break. I select in my interactivity piece on Lumio to make groups, and now they can submit something to me that they can work on together on their devices. Shoutouts are great. Uh, they're pre-made, some of them, or I can make them individual. So I make my shout out with a custom background. This is one that was provided for me. It's my birthday. What are some effects that can happen to me? So as students are submitting this, their names and their information will pop up here. I have the opportunity to make it anonymous or not. Full class whiteboards work uh, very similarly. I pull up a whiteboard. Uh, this also works like um, some of, uh, well, in Nearpod, they have some of the other activities where students can put sticky notes up here. I can customize this. And if I don't want them to answer, I just select this button up here. Everyone can edit. Now, no one can edit this. We can have a discussion about it. When I'm ready for them to submit their answer, I turn that on. Now all of their computers are activated, and it lets them respond to the activity. Um, this is one on map skills, and I used it not because it's really as much of a secondary activity, but just an idea of what you can do. So maybe you're reading a story. I used to do a story with the Hunger Games years ago when we taught that in middle school. And I looked at the Hunger Games as part of my social studies unit. So as students were reading that in language arts, we would do map skills in social studies. We would actually map out all the districts. And what they found out was, well, we have a district. Washington, D.C. is a district what would be District 1. And they looked through the text to find the evidence, and they came up with the idea that District 1 
probably was Hollywood, California, but had moved to a different part of the country. So they could throw up a map here and they could discuss that, putting their information or mapping it out as they see fit. Maybe we have a particular brain map that we want to have. We can set up an empty set of boxes and students can input pictures and then do a writing prompt or have a discussion based on that. Again, these interactivity pieces, these are things that we're trying to do anyway. So we're not reinventing the wheel, we're not changing how our classroom is designed, but we are changing how we interact with our students because they have changed how they interact with us. Temperature and concentration gradient don't influence the rate of diffusion. Do you find that is true or false? And in this particular activity, I have live results pulled up. So I can see the progress of how many, uh, what percentage of my students have answered. Or if I come here and click show live results, I can see the numbers of students that think it's true, the numbers of students that think it's false. I can do an overview of the activity that just pulls up the percentage of my students so they can see how their class is doing. It's almost like a countdown. Go back to show questions. I can hide the live results down here, or I can even end the activity. When I end the activity, end in review, you can see I have my students here. I can reset the activity and start over, or down here, I can export results. So if I threw up a quiz like this, or a pretest, I export results and I get an Excel sheet that is uh, alphabetical as student names, every answer that they gave, which was correct, which was incorrect, what did they write, I have class data, it all pulls down and summarizes it for me here in an Excel sheet, which is very, very useful. So again, these are just some ideas of how we're gonna take the activities you're already doing in your classroom, and we're gonna connect our students so we can have more of a 21st century learning model. We're doing turn and, talk, turn and talks, we're doing group work, we're doing interactive pieces, we're having them write, we're having them do mind maps. These are just ways that we can put it into our presentation that makes their learning more engaging, but also engaging with the technology. And it makes our job easier because we're presenting from something like this. We don't have to be an in-class teacher and a virtual teacher. Uh, we can do voiceovers for these, record ourselves. We can input videos of ourselves. If you have doc cams, there are ways that we can record videos for that and put them in here as well. So we have a lot of options and all of the temp templates will be available. I hope that this has helped you kind of piece together how what you're doing in your class is just slightly going to shift in a way that is a bit more engaging for our one-to-one -one classrooms and our students. So any of the templates that you would like will be on our training section, and any of them that you find, feel free to email to me so that I can add them in. I'd be happy to do that.